Good morning, Christ United Methodist Church. Welcome if you are zooming in, um, either online or on cable. Welcome if you are here in person. If you were here in person, you would notice that you would think this is a Methodist church. There is nobody in the first four, four pews on either side. It's like y'all are sitting in the back, like, wow. There it is. Hey, a bunch of announcements this morning I want to share with you and some prayer concerns. First of all, I don't know if you're aware, but we are producing a partial bulletin. We didn't we haven't been using bulletins because there's a whole question of touching and, you know, the whole nine yards. But Amy makes up a handful of these every Sunday. So they have been sitting, nobody's been touching them since Thursday. And they lay out on that table, it has birthdays and anniversaries and some of the basic announcements. It does not have the order of service. It's not the six-page document it used to be. But if you want one, they are out there, all right? There is, um, let's see, today is the last day for addresses for college boxes. So if you've got a college student in your sphere of influence and you haven't gotten us their address, it's either today or they don't get one. So please get us the addresses, okay? Um, the prayer meeting that used to meet on Wednesday nights is coming back. Okay, it meets in the open door room at 6.15 on Wednesdays, and it's going to start up again on the 7th. So not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, October 7th, they'll be back at 6.15 on Wednesdays. We need a little bit of help um, serving coffee on Sunday mornings. As you know now, if you would like coffee, you come to the window and they serve you coffee or water. Um, we could use some folks to help out with that. It's like the same two people. So if that's something you could do on Sunday morning, you know, it's a real hard training process. This is how you make coffee. This is how you pour coffee. This is how you hand coffee. I think you can handle it. Um, see Anne if you could help out with that. And the trustees have been busy this week. They um, moved forward and we got the two of our four air conditioning units replaced our main units. The one hasn't worked in almost a year. So um, the folks that meet in the open door room could be in for a real surprise if it gets hot, because we'll turn it on and they'll come out blue, I guarantee you. You can like hang beef in that room, it's really cold now. So thank you to the trustees for all their hard work. Hey, trick or treat's coming up. And as you know, Franklin has said, okay, we're gonna go ahead and do trick or treat. So trunk or treat is happening here at Christ Church. Now, here's what we could use help with. One, we need some more pop-up tents because we're going to put pop-up tents the whole way around the perimeter of that parking lot, distanced, and then people can be in each of the pop-up tents and have candy out on a table in front of them. So we also need candy, okay? So if you want to donate some candy, that'd be great. If you've got a pop-up tent that um, is available, see Amy Smith, all right? We're going to probably need about 20 or so of those, and we have about 10 that I know of right now. Okay. There's a Bible study happening. I got to be honest a minute. I got in trouble for this because I didn't announce it last week. You'll know why I got in trouble in a minute. There's a new Bible study happening starting this Wednesday. How's that for short notice? 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. It's going to be in Heritage Hall. It's, uh, it's called Maker um, Disciple Series, and it's being led by Sharon Greenewalt. See the problem? <laughs> there was just a lot on my brain last week. But anyway, uh, if you want to sign up for either the 10 a.m. or the 7 p.m. session, either let Amy know at the office or call the parsonage and let Sharon know, okay? Um, she's got a few slots left in each one. What you can't do is jump groups. So you can't sign up for the morning and then show up half the time in the evening. You need to stay in your group so you guys can build community. It's only five weeks long. Five weeks. Bang, bang, done. All right, let me share with you some folks we're praying about this morning because this is taking longer than it should. We're still praying for Delaney, a 17-year-old niece of Lori McCandless, um, cousin to Jenna McCandless, and, and Jenna and, um, and Delaney are pretty close, and she is still in the hospital in Columbus not doing well. Um, they're doing some speech therapy to try to teach her how to communicate again. She was in an auto accident. Barb Lynn is rehabbing at TCU, and sounds like she had a pretty good day yesterday. I saw a post that said she was actually able to move her leg without excruciating pain. So she's pretty happy about that. Uh, Kevin Billingsley is still in the hospital. Chuck Schweitzer has been moved to ICU. So be praying for Chuck. 
He does not have COVID, but he does have a double pneumonia, his normal breathing conditions, and they believe there's something else going on they haven't identified yet, so they have him on a vent right now. So be praying for Chuck. Randy Johnson goes in this Friday for shoulder surgery. Steve Ray has to have his leg amputated. Be praying for him. That may have happened yesterday. I'm trying to remember from the post I saw. Um, Howard Compagna has been hospitalized, um, which is, is dramatic in that they need to work on some things, but the good news is Barb can go see him, which is kind of a cool thing. Shirley Grimm lost her husband this week. Be praying for Shirley. Clarence Bacher has ulcerations on his ankle, so he's off work for a week. That's a problem. And we want to pray for our nation. In fact, I want to do that specifically at our prayer time later, and we'll talk about that when we get to that section of the service. Gosh, that was a lot. I'm sorry. Let's just, let's just pause and breathe. Father God, we just want to stop before we even get started and breathe deep of your Holy Spirit. Father, we want to breathe out the stress of getting ready and getting here and breathe in your calmness. We want to breathe out the anxiety and worry that consumes our lives and breathe in your peace. We want to breathe out all the angst and frustration, all that is distracting us, and we want to breathe in, Father, your Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit air, Father, that brings life to us. In these moments, Father, we want to breathe deep of you and celebrate your name. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, amen. As you know, Pastor Sam and Kim are on vacation this week and next, so um, Michelle has graciously agreed to impersonate Sam this morning. Caleb's going to help us out, uh, doing some song leading at the second two services and some this morning. And, and Lois Cross has graciously agreed to tickle the ivories with the help of John Post. John, thank you for being here. Thank you, Lois, for being here. Um, folks, let's worship together. Scripture today is 2 Samuel 7, 22. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. Let us go ahead and stand, and we'll sing together.
and let us all pray as one. Loving God, thank you that you have brought each of us safely to this place. We greatly surrender our lives to you in worship and praise. As we gather, we remember those who are here in this place and those worshiping with us from the other locations. We remember those who are sick and we ask for their healing and those who sorrow as we ask for their peace. We invite your beautiful Holy Spirit to move freely among us. Come dwell in each of our hearts. Equip us, challenge us, comfort us, and teach us more today on how we should pray. Father, as we meet now, may we behold your beauty and encounter your grace. We ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. may be seated. Are there children who would like to come up front for the children's sermon? Now I'm going to cheat a whisker because I found out this morning that we have some littles who watch us at 815 who are deaf. And when I wear a mask, they can't hear. Do you want to come sit? Why not? I know, isn't that cool? I got got lollipops. You want to sit right there and I'll show you what I have in my pocket? You ready? What is that? that? It looks like a stick, doesn't it? Yeah, Yeah, it looks just like a stick. But but look, here's here's something you can't see. You ready? Somebody took this very ordinary stick just like you and I are pretty normal, pretty ordinary, right? And watch this, ready? <gasps> Made it into a letter opener. With, they took a knife and they carved a very ordinary stick into a letter opener. It was made by a Native American by the name of Joseph Red Cloud. And I picked this up on vacation this year because I thought it was so cool. That, that an ordinary stick... The kind that I throw in the woods almost every day at my house because the wind blows them out of the tree and they're in the way for the mower and just pick them up and just wing them. Somebody was able to make something useful out of it. Sometimes we feel pretty ordinary, but really when God comes in, man, we are useful. God has got a plan to make you very special. Yeah. Yeah. And pretty soon you're going to be a big brother. Holy cow! That's going to be pretty special too. So let's pray and thank God for taking ordinary people like you and me and making us very special. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord, today that you take the ordinary, us, and you make us useful. You make us exceptional. You make us very, very special. In Jesus' name, amen. How about lollipop? Which one? You can have any one you want. There you go. You want a blue one? How about, oh, this is a good one here. You'll like that one. Yeah, I don't have any blue. Sorry. Have a good day. Hey, folks, we've got 
we've got a video for you to watch because it's, it's that time of year. A homiletics professor told me, he says, you've got to be careful what you say to children. Those cherubs will say anything. You've got to be at the top of your game when you're doing a children's sermon. I, you don't believe me, ask Barb Lynn. She used to do them all the time. Like, they'll just say anything. Anyway, it's that time of year for Operation Christmas Child. Now, we considered sitting oper- setting Operation Christmas Child boxes aside this year and asking you to do them all online. But we got thinking about that, and we thought, listen... There's no reason we can't still do this. From the time you pack it till it gets somewhere is weeks, weeks. And it gives you an opportunity to have hands-on experience in ministry. And it's a wonderful way for you to take children, grandchildren, neighbor kids with you while you shop And you do some of this ministry. Now's a great time to get it as school supplies are cheap and we often put those in. So here's a video about Operation Christmas Child. I've sung and it's a a song of prayer. Uh, So I hope you all enjoy it. Take out your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. We want to look at verses 10 to 20 in the book of Ephesians. Uh, here's, Here's what happens when the pastor doesn't bookmark that. He has to remember the books of the Bible in order so he can get there quickly and not look like he's completely lost. Well, I know I've gone too far, so let's back up. There we go. 
This may seem like an odd place to start as we um, talk once again about the spiritual discipline of prayer, but it's the end of this text I want you to hear, but you need to hear the beginning to understand its context, all right? So we're in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 to 20. Here's what God's word says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father God, your word is a feast. It nourishes us. It fills us. Lord, allow it to transform us this day. To speak into these broken bodies of ours the truth of who we are whose we are, and what you want to do through us. We ask this all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. First of all, i got to brag a minute. We got a new remote. A couple weeks ago, after the first service, we got second service, and I'm pointing this thing, and it's not doing a thing. We're not sure if it was the remote or some other glitch, but I wasn't willing to try it again, so I got a new one. It's pretty slick. Okay, here we go. Um, First two weeks of um, the D life, which stands for the disciplined life, we talked about studying scripture and how it's a map for our life. Do you remember that? Okay, good. Last week, we started on the second discipline of prayer, and we talked about how prayer is the heart of our life. And today we want to pick up there and talk about types of prayer. Prayers, petitions, intercessions, and thanksgiving. Okay, you with me so far? Okay. Scripture consistently shares with us that prayer is not a form, but there are a varieties, a variety of forms of prayer. Let me give you a couple passages to gnaw on a minute. We just heard from Ephesians. This is from 1 Timothy I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Here's Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, if you recall, last week we, we delved into the, the story in the gospel of Jesus um, where, where he shares what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, in shorter version than what's in Matthew, and it was very clear that there were, there were phases in this prayer. He He spent time adoring God. He he spent time asking for things, daily bread, deliverance from evil. Okay. Well, not unlike that, 
Today we want to talk about all these different types of prayer. Now let's be clear, when I'm talking about different types of prayer, it does not mean we pray one type, say amen and go away, and then we maybe come back and we pray another type and say amen and go away. Oftentimes, these types of prayer meld together in our prayer life, and we're doing a little bit of everything at once, and that's okay. Here's the other thing I want you to recognize today. You probably pray way more than you think. The reality is most of us have this image in our mind of what prayer should look like. Somebody taught us someplace along the way that, that when you pray, hands must be folded, head must be bowed, eyes must be closed. You know, it's a little tough when you're going down the highway. Aren't you glad I don't pray that way when I drive? You know, the reality is any conversation with God is prayer. Sharon and I have been married 22 years. I assume you get that every conversation we have does not sound the same. Sometimes it's a request for help. Honey, could you, could you grab this for me? Honey, could you open that door for me? Sometimes it, it's, it's, it's a statement of, thank you, that meal was amazing. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for stepping in and, and giving me what I needed today. Sometimes they are conversations of frustration. I cannot believe this is where we're at. It's all a part of our relationship. And if you are married and you tell me that, that all of your conversations with your spouse are of a simple, even keel, and all sound the same, I will call you a liar. I know better. Why is it we think there's only one way to talk to God? We are in a relationship with God. That relationship ought to be of such that we can share anything with God. Now, let me be honest with you. People told me when I was a young person, you know, there's certain things you just don't absolutely want to do. You know, God will strike you dead for that stuff. Not true. Read the scriptures. There are places in the scriptures that you and I, if we prayed such a prayer, we would be certain that God was about to strike us dead. And God preserved that in scripture. My favorite reference, and I talk about it all the time, is the one where David says to God, God, I wish you would take the children of my enemy and dash those children's heads against the rock. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? I have not. That's a man who is mad. And he has no problem expressing that to his heavenly creator. And yet, the individual who prayed that prayer is called a man after God's own heart. A special king in God's eyes. So let's delve into a couple different types of prayer. Now, these come from a book that I shared with you last week. Um, Although I've dabbled in this book, I spent time this week and um, read most of this book, uh, a bits of each chapter, and I, I cannot recommend this highly enough to you. If you want to learn anything about prayer, there's your textbook. First of all, Richard Foster is an individual that I have a lot of respect for. He is a man who who over time has just proved again and again and again that he walks with God in a very special way. And he writes in such a dirt practical way. And this book is no exception. Prayer, the Heart's True Home is the title of the book. He gives us 21 types of prayer. If I started that, we'd get out of here at the end of the first service at about two this afternoon, which means the other two services would be a little upset. So we're not going to do that. We're going to look at five very quickly, okay? Here we go. We're going to go in here with lightning speed. Simple prayer. Simple prayer is, is at its simplest form just us throwing up to God everything that's on our brain. Needs, emotions, whatever is, is concerned. And it's messy. 
Many of us don't pray as much because we think, oh, you know, um, I, I can't express that to God. Or, you know, I got to clean that up first. Or I, I got to get myself kind of organized and, and I got to use the right language in the right form. And I got to sit down. I got to fold my hands. I got to close my... No, no, no. Simple prayers, you just toss it up in the mess that it is. Here's an image for you. When your kindergartner brought you a picture... Was it beautiful? Well, of course it is, right? You used to get sucker on the refrigerator. Forget the fact that you had no idea what it was until they interpreted it. It looks like abstract art, yes? But it's beautiful because it came from their heart. That simple prayer, guys. And some people say, oh, yeah, yeah, but this is for beginners, you know. I've matured beyond that. No, 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 no. If you've matured beyond simple prayer, you've matured too far. I don't know about you, but there are days when I just need to open my mouth and let it fly. I just need to toss it up, mess it it is, and say, Lord, I I don't know what you're going to do with this, but here it is. And let's be honest, in simple prayer, it is often very egocentric. It's very much about me. It, it's, it's not lofty prayers about the kingdom of God. It's, it's not prayers about the, the church universal. It's, it's not prayers about the needs of others. It's, Lord, I need this and I need it like now. Yesterday would be better. And Lord, I'm mad. And Lord, this is frustrating. And Lord, if I had my way, that person wouldn't still be employed. Can't you just get rid of them somehow? Oh, some of you know those people. Okay. That's simple prayer. Don't ever mature beyond it. Because there are moments when we just need to hand God the mess that we find ourselves in. And he loves that because we're his kids. It's not about doing it just right. It's not about having the right language. It's not about having the right posture. It's not about cleaning it up first. It's those prayers that we pray as we're going down the highway and we pass an accident scene. We have no idea what's going on there, but we just say, Lord, I, I, do it, whatever, just handle it. That's simple prayer. The vocabulary doesn't matter. The fashion does not matter. It's a loving kindergartner, if you will, expression to God. God, there it is. It might not be pretty. I may need to interpret a little bit. But the good news is the Holy Spirit within you already knows what you need. And sometimes you're just kind of moaning and groaning and throwing up words. And the Lord knows what you're talking about. Second type of prayer is praying the ordinary. Praying the ordinary is is allowing God to impact all of our life. Not just part of it. I think one of the most frustrating things for me as a pastor over my time in ministry has been the folks that I see who who want to somehow relegate their walk with God to a compartment in their life that takes place Sunday morning. And from the time worship dismisses until I see them the following time that they're in worship, whether it's next week or a month from now, their spirituality doesn't affect anything else in their life. If we did that in our married life, we wouldn't be married very long, would we? Can you imagine only thinking about your spouse, only respecting your spouse, only honoring your spouse when you're in their presence? But when you're not, do whatever you want. How long would you stay married? You see, ordinary prayer is taking all of life the good, the bad, the ugly, and saying, Lord, show me where you are in all of this, in all of this. While I'm making parts at the lathe, 
Lord, I want you to be a part of that. While I'm changing dirty diapers, Lord, I want you to be a part of that. While I'm eating at the dinner table with my family, Lord, I want you to be a part of that. As I'm driving to church on Sunday morning, Lord, I want you to be a part of that. As I'm reading scripture, Lord, I want you to be a part of that. In all of life, all the ordinary, all the mundane, all the benign moments of life, Lord, I want all of those to be touched by you. While in seminary, I, um, I decided to get a job. It seemed like a good idea at the time. It didn't do so well for my grades, by the way. But I, um, I went and I became a, uh, a youth pastor or a youth worker at a local church about uh, 20 miles from campus. Because I was serving in that church, I connected with a man who was a veterinarian by the name of Dr. Jerry Thornhill. This man is utterly brilliant. And I'm not joking about that. Some of you in the medical community know that there are two ways to do kidney dialysis. There's hemodialysis through the veins, where they put a fistula in the arm. There's also something called peritoneal dialysis, where they put a catheter in the abdomen, and they put fluid in at night, and it sucks all the toxins out through the organ walls, and then the fluid drains out, and it literally dialyzes the body every night. The catheter that they put in was developed and patented by this guy. Dr. Jerry Thornhill. At Purdue University, they developed it for dogs and cats first. I worked in his clinic for about three years, and um, we were the only, the only privately owned kidney dialysis center in the world for dogs and cats. Normally, you have to go to a university for that. We did chemotherapy, we did fiber optic scoping, we did ultrasounding. We didn't do anything normal. You went to your regular vet for that. Jerry was a follower, is a follower of Christ. And, and I remember talking to him about his journey. And he would talk about how while he's trying to get a catheter in a dog's leg, he'd be praying. While he's trying to find the mass on the kidney with the ultrasound, he was praying. While he's doing these procedures, he's praying. And he's thanking God that just, and I went, oh, this is cool. Everything in his life was a part of his Christian journey. It was amazing. That's what we're talking about. No matter what you're doing, having God be a part of that is praying the ordinary. Let's keep going. Two types of prayer that you are intimately familiar with. Petitionary prayer and intercessory prayer. Some people use these interchangeably. Foster differentiates them, and he differentiates them this way. He says, petitionary prayer is about our needs. When we come to the Lord and say, Lord, I need, that's a petition. When I come to the Lord and say, Lord, help, somebody else, that's an intercession. Okay? So this is when we're, when we're listing needs about me or about others. Petitionary and intercessory prayer. Can we be honest that most of us don't grow past this? Yes? That's where we stop. We come to God when there's a need. Instead of coming to God and saying, God, I want you to be involved in all of life. Or God, I want to be able to talk to you about anything. In simple prayer. And the last type of prayer I want to draw your attention to is a prayer of praise or thanksgiving. If you notice, when we begin worship every Sunday, the first couple of songs are just praising God for who he is. The first line of the Lord's Prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. What is that? That's a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Bishop Bayshore used to tell the story of going through New England. He, um, 
he was a bishop in the New England annual conference before he came to Western Pennsylvania. And I think I've told the story before. He said, one Sunday, he and, he and Carolyn are driving down the road between preaching experiences. And he said, every time they would turn the corner, there would be a more beautiful vista of fall foliage. He said, we just went from beauty to beauty to beauty to beauty. And every time, he just... He couldn't help himself. Thank you, Lord. This is a ama- God, you are amazing. Some of you experienced that. You, you go on vacation, you see something you've never seen before, and it just blows you away. Or you walk out in your backyard, and you see something that is just so incredible. Most of you know my wife does not like spiders. I'm not fond of them. They don't bug me. But you know what amazes me is spider webs, especially first thing in the morning. Sometimes you're driving down the highway and you can see them between the power lines, you know? There's just, there's just webs everywhere and they're gorgeous and they're intricate. Do you know that spider web pound for pound is stronger than steel? Like that's totally cool. And they make that in their body. Isn't God amazing? He knows how many hair are on your head. He knows every thought before it comes out your mouth as a word. He knows all the deep, dark secrets that you think nobody knows about your life. And you know what? He totally loves you and forgives you. Man, if that doesn't throw you on your face in praise, then we need to talk about you getting connected to your emotions. Because it, you, you ought to get up in the morning, and, and, and I've been joking lately. People say, how are you doing? And I'll go, ooh, it's still beating. I'm good. I'm not that old yet, but, you know, there are days that we're like, wow, hey, warm breathing taking on nourishment. It's all good. We ought to get up every morning and say, Lord, another day to serve you. Wow. How'd Paul say it? To live is Christ. To die is gain. Like, that's a win-win. That ought to elicit praise out of us every day. And I'm convinced that the more we praise, the more we thank God, the less likely we are to slip into negativism and depression. Now, yes, there's clinical depression. I totally get that. But sometimes we focus so much on the negative that we forget what God is about. He is the God of the universe. He created absolutely everything you see. And he has blessed you beyond measure. Man, you ought to you gotta get up every morning and just say, Lord, I, I don't even know where to start. Thanks. So let me talk about a couple of things that we just need to address before we leave our time in prayer. Last week, I very glibly said that God answers all prayer in one of three ways, yes, no, and not yet. And, and, and although I believe that, let me say this, that does a disservice to some of you and, and to parts of my life, because that middle answer feels a whole lot like unanswered prayer, that no. We, we pray, and when God says no, It causes all kind of pain in us, doesn't it? Nineteen eighty five and nineteen eighty six I prayed hard for my mom's healing. It was not to be. That was a no. I do not understand why some people are healed and some people are not. We just need to be okay with some mystery. I don't know what God's thought process was there. I, I, I don't know if there was a higher, a higher need that I was not aware of. I don't know if it was, if it was that mom had suffered enough and this was the time for her suffering to be over. I don't, I don't know. I have crassly said at, at, at some points, you know, Lord, if you had to take one of my parents... Not that I'm ready to give either of them up, but you know what? Mom was really the glue that held the family together. And ever since then, the family hasn't been together. So maybe that's where you are. 
Maybe you're feeling like, you know, Lord, that was a dumb move. That's okay. You, you don't always need to be happy about the answer. Is that fair? Because there's some answers I just don't like. I don't like burying children. I don't like when a drunk driver takes out a perfectly good family. I don't like when the sin of another impacts me negatively or impacts you negatively. I don't like when disease comes into a body that is otherwise perfectly healthy and racks it. In the last six months, true story, I have heard about four people that live fairly close to one another, diagnosed with ALS. Three of them live within a half mile of each other in Erie County, Pennsylvania. I'm like, Lord, what's, what's going on here? These are people I know and love. Enough already. So if you have those moments in life when it seems like God said no and you're not okay with that, it's okay to not be okay with that. But don't allow that to stop your prayer life. Let me be honest with you. I know you're going to find this completely amazing, but there's some things about me that my wife still doesn't like. And in 22 years, she's been unable to fix them in me. Here's the good news. She still loves me. I have no idea why. If I was her, I'd have given up a long time ago. God's not going to toss you because you don't like something he's done. He's not going to say, you know what? I was good until you stopped liking me on this issue. Now, we're done. That's what you and I may operate, but we're not God. So, so when, you, when you don't get the answer you want, God's okay with you fussing a bit. Don't get stuck there, but it's okay to fuss a bit. God is an amazing, loving creator. He is not, he is not a vengeful deity. He is not up in heaven saying, well, you know what? When you were 18, you made that mistake, and I still am holding that against you. That's not the way he operates. The devil, oh, he's reminding you of those things every single day. He's convincing you that you have no right to stand in God's presence. No right to ask for what you're asking for. No right to think that God is going to listen to you in any way, shape, or form because of that one decision you made. Or those 25 decisions you made. So tell the devil to take a hike. And remember that the Father loves you. Beyond imagination. And he cannot wait to talk to you. He is sitting on the edge of his seat, so to speak, saying, Are we going to get together now? How about now? He's like our cockapoo that no matter when we come home, if we've been gone for five minutes or five hours, she is so excited that we're back. Because that's how dogs are. God is so excited you're talking to him. Whether it's once a day, once a week, once a month, he'd love it to be all the time. He is not angry saying, if you think I'm going to listen to you, you got another thing coming. Oh, the enemy will try to convince you of that. Don't let him. Allow the Holy Spirit to flow into you and transform you. The number one way that you are going to become more like Jesus is through prayer. God's going to use those moments to work in your life and to adjust you and to change you and to teach you. To speak scripture into you, songs into you, bring people into your life. And you're gonna come out the other side completely different. That's why Foster says to pray is to change. Yes. 
I cannot tell you how much I have changed in the last 22 years spending this much time this close to Sharon. She has made me a way better dad, a way better husband, a way better pastor because of what she brings out in me. And she's a flawed human. When I spend time in God's presence, oh, God's just busy molding, shaping, changing, so I can have life abundant. I hope today you'll go home and say, you know what, Lord, we haven't spent enough time together. That doesn't mean you set everything else aside all the time. Sometimes while you're doing the ordinary, you also spend time with the Father. Let me come back to a passage that I shared with you earlier. I just want to take the middle verse of it. Out of 1 Timothy 2, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, especially, my word, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. In just a moment, folks, we're going to spend some time in prayer. And although I've given you a whole list of things we need to pray about, after we hear Michelle sing, I want to take some moments and hold up what's going on in our nation. We're about to bump up against, you know, we've got about four-ish weeks to a presidential election. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican. That, that, that's, that's up to you. What I want you to do, though, is pray that God would work through what we do as flawed humans, and he'd take care of us as a country. It probably needs to start with you and I doing some repentance and saying, Lord, whatever is good for everybody, I'm okay with. It may not be what I'd like, but I'm going to trust you to do what you alone can do. Because, Lord, we, we need to get back to a place where we honor you. And it may be 200 years ago when that happened well. But, Father, right now we want to be able to proclaim your name and bring your kingdom to bear. And however that can happen most effectively, Lord, that's what we want. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that that you're working through your word to transform us, that you are working through prayer to change us, transform us into the likeness of your son. Lord, inspire us today to draw you a picture, messy as it is, and to offer it to you as a prayer. The words may not be stellar but you're so ready to hear us thank you lord hear our hearts in jesus name amen
Thank you, Michelle. You may be seated. Let's pray. Father God, you, you know all the needs that we have listed. You know all the burdens of our heart. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is so much bigger than anything we bump up against. Thank you that you are a God who creates beauty around us, startling, amazing, jaw-dropping beauty. Thank you that you are a God, Father, who cannot wait to talk to us. Father, hear our heart right now. Do we may offer to you those things that are burdening us most and receive them from our heart. Lord, your grace is so amazing. So amazing. Sometimes you take away the storm. Sometimes you strengthen us to endure the storm. Lord, without you, we would be sunk. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being with us in the midst of the fire. Thank you that we never, ever walk alone. We don't work alone, we don't parent alone, we don't drive alone, we don't sleep alone. You're always, always there. To be honest, Father, some days we feel like we're the only ones who desire to see your kingdom come. We watch the news, we read the paper, we visit social media, and Father, all we hear is vengeance and hate, blame and accusation. Father, it is burdensome. What we desire, Lord, is for you to step into our experience in such a powerful and remarkable way that it is clear to all that it is you. But just about the time we voice that, Father, we remember that you call us to be your hands and feet. So, Father, forgive us for not opening our mouths and telling unkind people to be kind. Forgive us, Father, for not speaking up and encouraging children who are being hurt and put down. Forgive us, Father, for not stepping into the gap and speaking words of hope and peace and calm in the midst of chaos. Lord, use us, your people, even in this election process, not to advocate for our own candidate, Father, but to advocate for civility and graciousness and dialogue and to advocate for your kingdom. Lord, help us to not be so arrogant as to think that we alone have the answers. Help us to not be so arrogant, Father, as to think that we alone can see the future and know exactly how it's going to turn out if so-and-so is elected. Remind us, Father, that you are still God on the throne. That you alone, Father, are in charge of this universe. That you are not bound by time and space that you are not absent, 
that injustice has not escaped you, that arrogance has not escaped you, that hubris has not escaped you, but that you are working even through people that we don't like. Help us, Father, to become people of prayer instead of people of politics. Help us, Father, to pray your kingdom come here now. May we turn the page on 2020 and as we begin 2021 in a few months, Father, may we be people who are busy speaking truth to power, who are busy calling for grace, who are willing to admit when we are wrong, who are ready to listen more than speak. Thank you, Father, for your faithful church, for your witness in this world. May your church step up and be salt and light that we may make a difference today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your patience. We seriously need it. We ask all these things, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for the way you graciously support our ministry here at Christ Church. You have no idea how important that is. You make this pastor very proud, but also you make God's work so much easier. Last Wednesday, they, made three, they served 306 people out the back door of the church. It was amazing. If you haven't been a part of that, you need to show up. Just to be able to see the faces of people when you hand them a meal. Is amazing. So continue to listen to God in your giving. If you are not with us live, there's a slide coming up that'll tell you how to give if you're interested. Lord, thank you for the freedom to give and your grace in giving. Amen and amen. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your grace as we learn together. Go in peace now. And may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.